Halfway through the games and the big story of the day revolves around one of the heroes of 2016, swimmer Ellie Robinson in the S650 metre butterfly. Now, Ellie didn't appear in her first two events, so all eyes were on her for this one. She entered the pool in her trademark gangster style. Looking ready for business. Now, in the race, Ellie came in fifth, but she gave an interview afterwards that prompted Anna to tweet, is it okay that Ellie Robinson has the whole UK in tears this morning? In that interview, Ellie revealed she's been living with a condition called Perthes disease. Uh, Robinson received her diagnosis of Perthes disease in 2012. Now, it causes her hip to collapse and rebuild in a new shape. She posted this scan on Instagram, which gives you an idea of what her right hip looks like. Have a look at that and then listen to this. This was the interview that everyone was talking about in which Ellie explained what happens when your hip has a time limit. Unfortunately for me, I ran out of time this year with my hip. I think had the Games been last year, it would have been a completely different story. I honestly thought I'd be more upset than this, but to be honest, I came here and I made the final. And I'm still in the, in the top five. I... I can, sorry, I'm, now I'm starting to well up. I can feel it now, but... In the past year, people have been saying to me, like, it's OK to finish, because I was in a really, really, really low point in my life. Um, I was struggling so much. I was seeing a psychiatrist. I was on medication. It was, it's been one of the hardest years of my life. Um, people have been saying, like, it's OK to finish. It's fine. You don't have to carry on. And I said, I am not finishing this way. It is not going to end this way. So I can walk away. And even though I didn't medal, I can still say that I ended on my own terms. I went out the way that I wanted to. <laughs> Sorry, I know this is, this is quite emotional because I... <laughs> because there have been so many times when I thought, I remember saying, if I have to crawl to the block on my hands and knees, I will do it. <laughs> and I'm just so proud of myself for getting this far because... <laughs> I've been in agony this whole year and this is a story of triumph. This is not a story of defeat. Josh? Um, yeah, it's great to follow that VT. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that the amazing thing is because you see the athletes at the Paralympics and yeah. when they perform, they look so effortless. Yeah. That it's very easy to forget everything they're going through to get to that position because it's kind of covered up by the elite performance. Yeah. And I think it's very easy to obsess over gold, silver and bronze, particularly when you're Australian and you've got less of them. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> But I think it, it's very... and But that's not really what all this is about. This is about people pushing themselves and testing themselves to their absolute limit. Yeah. And when they get gold, silver and bronze, that isn't the be-all and end-all. It's about... That's an achievement in itself, and that's an amazing thing, and that's what's so inspiring about it, I think. And this hit you as well, didn't it, Alex? Yeah, I mean, yeah, ironically enough, I was in bits uh, watching <laughs> that earlier. Um, <laughs> it's... What, what, I, what struck me is I think we, we should be so proud of Ellie Robinson for representing us uh, as a country in a sporting sense. You know, she won gold yeah. in Rio with that injury. Yeah. She carried on through to the games in among, with all of that pain and that, and that suffering physically to, to swim today and represent us on the international stage and finish in the top five in with, with all of that. And I think as well, mentally, just how hard it, it must have been for her. You can, you can see in that interview. And it's like, I've had pain-killing injections in, in my foot because I've got something called talipes in it and it gets, it's getting worse as I get older. And I get, like, really, like, upset about it and I think, you know, maybe in 10 years' time I won't be as mobile with my kids. And I kind of... I think sometimes I don't look after my body as well because I think, sod it. What's the point if it's going to go... if it's going to go wrong anyway? Right. And I feel like sometimes I don't look after myself and I don't see doctors and, you know, and, 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 and things like that. And actually listening to Ellie talk, you know, she's 20 and I'm 37, and it kind of made me think about my own disability and made me think about, you know, I, I can do things on my own terms. You shouldn't, you shouldn't just yeah. give up. And I think that that's why we get so much from the Paralympics of you, because, you know, we have the sport, but then there's moments like that and we have people like Ellie Robinson representing us, and that transcends sport. And we, I'm so grateful... To, to have somebody like Ellie representing this country, but also representing disabled people. It means the world. Yeah. <laughs> and I know 
you know what? In the last year, I've had three different people tell me I should stop playing rugby league. Two doctors and Josh. Um, <laughs> No, no, no. That was just us because we didn't want you I talking said about. Talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Ms. Ruthie Holly said, "Is it okay that an arthritic 44-year-old who's full of metal is now dreaming of becoming a Paralympian thanks to Ellie Robinson GB?" See, that's the thing. When you see moments like that, it makes other people go, "I'm going to do whatever it is that I want to do, regardless of what the level is." Um, we're so lucky that Ellie is joining us now live from Tokyo. Hey, Ellie. <laughs> Um, first question, are you okay? Yeah, I mean, aside from the fact that I am running on a dangerously low amount of sleep, <laughs> although it's all good because I have my chocolate muffin, <laughs> my teammates got me that. So I'm really thankful for that because I got home and they'd written loads of really nice messages. Um, yeah, so I am more than okay. I mean, I've got like a bit of pain in my hip. But, I mean, I'm at that point now where it's like, it doesn't matter. I've raced. I've got there. And, I mean, you guys are going to make me cry again because I just watched everything that you all said and you're reducing me to tears again. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> and well, how important was it for you to, to give that interview afterwards? Because it seemed like you really, really wanted to say all of that. Oh, definitely. It's something that I've been wanting to do... I'd say since November last year, because November was when I first kind of started to have those issues or started to realise those issues, because when we came back from lockdown, I I guess I thought that the difference that I felt kind of... I always felt that something was wrong. I just didn't know what it was, and I assumed that it was being out of the water for such a long time. And by November, I think it had been about two months of training now, it wasn't going away. Um, so that was when I really started to kind of worry. And then I started to think about, like, OK, this is a story that I'm going to share because, I mean, when I look back, it really is unbelievable because I remember a physio telling me, like, you never should have gone out and won gold in Rio. You never should have gone and won in the Commonwealth Games. You shouldn't be in Tokyo. Like, I mean, I have a weakened immune system as well, so I'm actually on the vulnerable list. So when the lockdown came, I was classed as clinically extremely vulnerable. And, again, all the immunologists, they all say, like, we don't know how you're so well. We don't know how you do it. Because on paper, you should be so much more ill than you actually are. And I think I think that's just kind of how I do things. Um, on paper, I just kind of... I should be a lot worse than I am. But I think I've just got this grit and this determination. It's kind of like, well... Mm. No, I'm, I'm going to choose what I am, actually. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Vicky said, is it OK to think you should throw a birthday party for Ellie Robinson on tonight's show to celebrate her and show how much we all love her? I'm a bit confused by the Japanese... Uh, by, the, by the time difference. Is, was it your, is it your birthday today or was it yesterday? Um, so, the 30th of August. So, for you guys, it's... Yes, it's my birthday, but for me... It's not anymore, but I can live it again. I can have the longest <laughs> birthday. I'm not going to say no. Well, <laughs> we are going to we are going to throw a birthday party. I don't know if you can see the studio. We've got some. We've set up a massive board of Josh and Alex in the studio, wishing you happy birthday. <laughs> we've got birthday hats on. Uh, our poll for tonight, we've decided, is tweet Ellie your birthday wishes. Tweet her directly at Ellie Robinson GB. Use the hashtag Happy Birthday Ellie. Uh, Ellie. We feel, we're so proud of everything you've achieved, and it's your birthday, so if it's all right with you, I'm going to give you a little bit of a speech. Do you mind? A little bit of a birthday speech? I'm, oh, I'm, go on. I'm on my feet. I'm going to become a drunk Australian uncle. Ellie! <laughs> Ellie is one of your three dads. I just want to say we're all so proud of you. We've, we've loved you from the very day you came out into the pool area. <laughs> Wearing a massive coat and, you know, kicking and stroking. And no matter what happens from here, we just want, to, want you to know you'll always be our favourite gangster. <laughs> um, and I'm going to... Oh. You've got your muffin. I'm holding a cake in front of the screen. If you would like to just blow the candles out, give it a blow. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Happy birthday, Ellie Robinson! 
Now, we asked you to tweet your birthday messages to Ellie Robinson, and you did. She, we've got her back on the line. I believe you're still there, Ellie? Yeah, hello. I'm not sure if you've seen, but um, happy birthday, Ellie, is currently trending number one in the UK on oh. Twitter. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I mean, know. Look, each time I talk to you guys, each time I come on this show, I end up crying. I can't do this again. Oh, OK, well, there <laughs> are loads. So Listen, much. you can read all the messages. You're phenomenal. We cheered. We cried. Happy birthday, Ellie. And there's one here. Is Hannah Robinson your mum? Yes, bless her. <laughs> oh, she wrote, 20 years ago, a tiny premature Ellie Robinson was born fighting. She's been a courageous and determined fighter ever since. Hashtag nine weeks early. Hashtag happy birthday, Ellie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ellie, we love you so much. Congratulations. And hopefully we'll see you when you get back here very soon. Happy birthday from all of us. Thank you so much. It means so much to see all these messages. It's quite overwhelming, but... I mean, wow, thank you. That's all I can say. I am honestly lost for words. And that's coming from me, who delivered that morning <laughs> yesterday. Happy birthday. We'll see you soon. <laughs>